Hi, I'm Gail Hogue. And I'm Gregory Hogue. And we are so thrilled to be here with you and offering to you a sacred geometry class that we've been working on this material for literally months. So before we get started, many of you may not be familiar with us. So we wanna give you a little bit of a background. Gregory and I met in um, 1985, actually, so 36 years ago. And we realized at that time that we had work to do. We had a mission. The universe had literally put us together. And prior to that, I had been working as an artist. I had found through my spiritual work that I had the ability to channel and work with higher knowledge. Um, and further on from then, I did go on to become a businesswoman, which was the universe asking me to do that as well. And Gregory had a whole nother experience that he was going through. What I started doing in the early 70s was working with meditation teachers and pyramids. And then in the late 70s, it graduated to a very powerful pyramid that ended up setting off my kundalini. What this means is the energy started flowing up from the earth. It flowed through my body so intensely that I literally had holes being burned in my feet. And I had to work to calm the energy down. But when I finally brought things into a balance within, I started realizing I could communicate with higher dimensional aspects of myself and other energies that wanted to support our evolution and our growth. And so that's what began a journey with building geometries. I didn't understand it as sacred geometry. I was simply building what I was seeing. And that's what happened when I met Gail <laughs> is I was carrying this box of geometries along with me everywhere. And in 1985. In 1985. And so here I meet him with a box and there were all these tetrahedrons. Well, I had been studying the work of Buckminster Fuller. So I was very familiar with geometry and the importance of the tetrahedron. So that set off our conversation as I let him know that I was getting information from Buckminster Fuller that I thought he should know about. And from there, we continued on. So we've spent all these years creating geometric tools that work with multi-dimensional energy mm -hmm. that have gone out all over the world to hundreds of thousands of people. And we're teaching about them. We've been teaching about them and we have a whole new level of a course that we'll be getting into with you today. So Gregory is going to share a little bit about the course. And I want to also let you know that before we start the program that will you know, really take you into understanding, we're going to do a meditation together that is energized by our sacred geometry technologies. And it'll help you integrate the information relax with it, work with your heart center so that you'll get the energy and the information on all the levels of who you are. So tell them about the program. So basically, we are going to be sharing a lot of universal patterns with you. And the purpose of that is to understand what the universe has done to create this reality and how we can tap into the essence of creation by creating those geometries and bringing them into our lives such that we start resonating with that energy. And that expands our energy field and who we are. So many of the things going on in this dimension are really filled with fear and negativity and so many aspects of electromagnetic frequencies and toxins. 
The way to get beyond all of that is to start resonating with your true nature. And that's what I'm going to start sharing with you today is that true nature of all of us as expressed by universal patterns and understanding. So before we move into our sacred geometry lesson and absorb a lot of information, let's start by getting centered through the heart. By relaxing and expanding your heart center, you will receive the essence and wisdom of this lesson that goes beyond the mental realm, inviting your higher knowing to participate. Take a few gentle breaths as you focus on your heart center. Relax and enjoy the feelings and images that you will see. In the past year, we have slowed down, spent more time in silence and introspection. This has served us to let go of old ways and prepare for change. We are in an extraordinary time of transformation that is breaking down the ways of the past and opening creative expression that aligns with our true nature. Take another cleansing breath. What does it mean to you to align with your true nature? Take a breath and open your awareness to what that alignment feels like to you. Imagine living in a world where you and others live in the spirit of divine love and compassion for the good of all. How does your heart feel? Is your body open to allowing this? Do you sense how this awareness can empower your life? Take another breath as you ponder these questions. The geometries you are seeing generate unique vibrational fields that help you reconnect with the essence of your being, love. As you relax, watch these geometries slowly turn. Soften your vision and allow the patterns to enter your consciousness. Just watch and feel the presence within. Be in a state of receiving. One of the beautiful things about sacred geometry is that it helps us remember who we are because it's built on the principles of how pure energy transforms into the matter of all life. Since everything is energy, these geometries you're seeing offer frequencies that relate to us on the levels of physical, mind, emotions, and spirit. These geometries work at the core level to bring us back in touch with soul and the divine patterns of all that is. Ah, let's take these moments together to become aware of the principles of universal connections and integrate them. Understanding the foundation of creation teaches us about our relationship to all so that we may find our place more easily. Take a few slow, deep breaths. Feel your body relax as you breathe. Ah, oh, release any tension you may notice in your neck and shoulders, in your back, and your lower body. Continue to breathe and allow your breath to bring a peaceful state 
to any areas of your body that feel tight. Let go of any constriction. Take another slow, deep breath. Allow your mind and body to feel the alignment that is occurring. As this is organically happening, you become more at ease. Open your heart to receive the energies. Feel the presence of your true nature and your purpose becoming stronger in your awareness. You are allowing the energy to work deeply within you. The universe is an amazing, abundant, and loving system holding unlimited potential for you. Ah, take another breath and connect with your higher self, soul, and become more aware of what this loving universe is offering you. Open your heart and mind to embrace the deep connection you have to the universe and to all souls on this planet. Feel that oneness. Focus on allowing the flow of energy you are receiving to guide you to receive deeper understanding of your connections to all life. Trust your intuition, inner voice, and inner vision to open your connections. You are expanding your consciousness and access to higher senses. Feel your divine relationship being strengthened. Notice how satisfying and good it feels. There is nothing to do. Just allow and trust your divine self. Ah, take a deep cleansing breath as we complete this meditation and start drawing your awareness back to you. Recognize how you are feeling and any insights you've experienced. And begin to gently move your shoulders, fingers, hips, feet, any parts of you ready to reawaken. The energy of this alignment will continue to support you as we move into the next segment of the Sacred Geometry lesson. As your heart, mind, body, and spirit collaborate to enjoy the upcoming information. Ah, so let's all come back and welcome Gregory. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you. So sacred geometry has a lot of numbers and things going on with it. But what I really want to share with you today are some of the concepts behind it. So I may leave out reading all the numbers that would just, I think, drive everyone crazy and put them to sleep. So let's jump into the essence of what sacred geometry is all about. Source resonates with this physical dimension and it creates energetic relationships throughout the entire universe. And it does it through the use of number, 
And when I say number, I mean one, two, three, four, but it's not just quantities. Numbers have qualities. They actually even have genders and work with describing aspects of the universe in very energetic ways. And the universe follows patterns that we see again and again, and cycles that move us through different times of the patterns and through time itself, which can be as large as 26,000 year cycles. We can use measure and the way we work with different ways of working with inches, miles, feet, cubits. There are a lot of sacred measures that are important to understand in the feedback they give us. And of course, frequency that describes sound and light and the way they are moving with numbers that may relate to other patterns. And of course, angles that work with degrees are an important aspect of how all of this fits together. And that's what sacred geometry is all about. And what I want to show you now, that picture that you just saw of the Vitruvian man with his hands outstretched drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. It was demonstrating an aspect of everything organic that follows a pattern called the phi ratio. And this is a caliper that measures that ratio that takes the small part, as you can see here, it's taking the tip of my middle finger and it's in that relationship to my whole finger. It creates a phi ratio relationship. Well, if I do that with my whole finger, it does it with my hand. And if I want to do my whole hand, it is in that proportion to my elbow. And I'm not special, it's you, every single one of us, the way our eyes, the way our head, the way our shoulders, to our navel, to our feet, it's working with this relationship. So let me show you some more of these relationships. These are the patterns unfolding from source that we see all around us. Patterns of flowers that follow very particular geometries. Planets, our body, every animal, the way everything works in creation, it's following these particular patterns, no matter where we are. And so that means it's a universal language where I could go to the other side of the universe and communicate with a different set of beings and be able to be understood because the language of working with the number one, two, three, four, and the geometries that are created from those numbers, it's consistent. You can find it everywhere. You find the spirals all through nature in the way it's created itself again and again and again, on into infinity. It is, expresses itself from the level of atoms, molecules, and DNA itself is following particular patterns, right down to planets, stars, and galaxies. Everything is subject to the patterns of universal order. And something that's important to understand is that when you work with measure, in this case, the diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles. And you find that in the period of time that each zodiacal sign has that number of years in 
the age of Pisces, in the age of Aquarius that we're now in, it's going to last 2,160 years. And see, these are resonant, vibrating together, like a sea tuning fork vibrating with a sea tone. Well, even geometry, like the cube of space, has 2,000. 160 degrees. So all these different aspects, geometry, the diameter of the moon itself, and time, they're creating resonant frequencies with each other. And this is how the universe connects in that greater order of unity, of oneness that we sometimes fail to see. But these patterns show us that they are all connected. So working in all the sacred books, we can find important information. And it's always valuable to listen to it, watch it, especially when numbers are concerned. So in Genesis, we see that God created everything in seven days. And what he began with was light. That was the first day of creation. And it's important to understand that when we're talking about light, that's only 0.0035% of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, a spectrum of energy that's moving from radio waves to gamma waves. And the quantum energy packet of all of this energy is something called the photon. It literally is the carrier of everything in the whole electromagnetic spectrum. All the energy around us is carried by a photon and Recently, within the last few years, two Polish scientists created an image of a single photon. They were able to measure it exactly. And what they found was that geometry, it took the shape of a star tetrahedron. And a star tetrahedron has eight points on it. Each one of those points has three triangles and there's 180 degrees in each one. So when you add all the degrees on the outside up, what you get is 4,320 degrees. Now, this is very special because guess what? The sun itself, is constructed in such a way that when you use miles as a measurement, it has 432,000 miles as the radius. And when you take 432 and square it, what you get is the miles per second of what Einstein calculated years ago within a, a very close approximation. So you see that 432, that photon, it's resonant. And this star tetrahedron can fractalize. That means it turns from one geometry into another geometry, like a fractal pattern that keeps going into all the platonic solids. So light is the source of all creation. And what you're seeing here is the fractal progression of the five platonic solids in a geometry that we make called the cosmic egg because it contains all the platonic solids. And on the outside is an icosahedron which links back into what's at the very core of this geometry, which is an octahedron. So that means this is a progression 
that just keeps going on forever. It's infinite as it goes from one geometry to the other. This is the star tetrahedron that when you connect the points where they cross over each other, you see there's a natural place where there's resistance, where with the star tetrahedron, it wants to break at these points where the energy is flowing and jump over to where the other cross point is. And when it does that, it creates in the center the octahedron. And when you connect the points where the energy wants to flow off the point of the tetrahedron, you create a cube. So this becomes our first major stage of geometries where we're working with something called Metatron's cube. And you can see in this diagram in the center, these are made by a man, Hans Jenny, who worked with a science called cymatics. And what he was doing was working with uh, powder and oils and water, putting vibrations through it. And often they would change the vibration and you would get a different pattern. But what we're seeing here is literally the same pattern from a different perspective because you're slicing through and getting a 2D pattern of a three-dimensional form. So when you look at Metatron's cube from the point, you're getting the pattern above, but when you're looking at it from the side, you're getting the pattern below. So Metatron's cube has several different patterns that it works with. And this geometry is a very special geometry that we like to use as one of the base geometries that we recommend because it's very grounding. It's working with the beginning aspects of creation and how we can connect to those aspects and bring them into our life in a way where we're feeling what Dharma, what our purpose is, the way we connect to the essence of the universe. Exactly. And a lot of times with sacred geometry, people have an experience where they connect to the higher levels. And that's really important because we are opening up that multidimensional capability. And at the same time, it's really important to be grounded so that we take our body along on this journey because we are in a body. And um, that's one of the things that I really love about Metatron's Cube. It takes you into higher realms and also brings you back into an experience of groundedness. So for many years, I had this underneath of my chair where I meditate. So I could both have something that brought me up into higher realms and then back into the physical again. And Archangel Metatron is really an important being and has actually been one of our collaborators. Definitely in all of this and has spent a lot of time in the land where we live. So we often put this under our bed to help with grounding and connection at night. So back to Metatron's cube and the next step of understanding is that the tetrahedron, it's made up of four elements and it's the first 3D reality form. And what I mean by that, I will show you now very simply with these three tennis balls. If you connect them all, they 
oops, got to hold them in front of me or they, they disappear. Uh oh. Um, they form a plane. I add a fourth one. And that's when you get something three dimensional. That's when you come into this reality we call 3D reality. So that's what you're seeing here is the first step into 3D reality. And when you measure that, um, I call it a she because numbers, as I said, have genders and even numbers are really feminine in nature. And thus four is working with a feminine aspect, plus it's giving birth to everything else. And let me show you what I mean, because when you add up all the triangles on the surface, what you get is 720 degrees total for the degrees in a tetrahedron. Now, when you double that at another 720 degrees, that gives you the next platonic solid, which is an octahedron that works with air. And the 720 degrees added to that gives you the next platonic solid, which is the cube for Earth, another addition, and we get the icosahedron. Now, interestingly, when you add all of these together, you get a total number equal to the diameter of the Earth itself. And this isn't just a rough estimate. I mean, literally, when you take the diameter of the Earth as measured through the equator, because the Earth is spinning, the equator has a bulge. So it's 7,926 miles. And if you measure it across the poles, it's going to be even less because it's squishing out on the sides. However, there's a 26 mile difference there, but there's something called the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. And when you, those are, 23 degrees above the equator and 23 and a half degrees below the equator. When you measure across diagonally that those two tropics, then you get exactly 7,920 miles. And if you went further and you were able to squish the whole planet into a smooth ball, just take all the surface area then you would get the ideal, the perfection of 7,920 miles. So you can see it really is amazing the way the degrees in the platonic solids are giving us the actual dimensions of the earth itself. And furthermore, when you take the dimensions of the earth. And remember how I showed you that the cube of space has the same number of degrees as the number of miles in the moon. Well, you take the diameter of the moon and you add it to the diameter of the earth and together you get 10,080 miles and you turn that into degrees and you get this geometry. And that geometry is made up of an icosahedron, which has 20 faces. And you add that to a dodecahedron, which has 12 faces. And the way they dance together, that means the way they interpenetrate each other, they create something called an icosadodecahedron. And that's what you see on the right. And that has the total of their two faces together, 32 faces. And when you turn all those rings 
into smooth bands, that's when you get the form above called the sphere of health. And this sphere is what is right here behind us now, hanging beneath that spinning form. So this is the sphere of health that we love to work with because when it's underneath this form, when it's spinning, when it's something we meditate with, it brings us into that relationship that's going on with the sun and the moon and other aspects that I think we'll, maybe I can show them now, or do you want to say well, something? I, I just want to briefly say that um, what's, what really is important about all this is that when we're dealing with health, we're talking about being out of balance, out of sync, out of resonance. And so when we provide something that helps us to return to that natural resonant state, then the body, mind, spirit is harmonizing again. And that's what's so important about coming back into health on all the levels of our being. And that's what Gregory was just showing you. What this does is it bring us, brings us back into that resonance so that health and well-being is something that we can really achieve again. I'd like to show you a little more about what's going on with this geometry. So you see, remember when I was talking about 720, that she's the measure of everything? Well, you see all of these, all of these different geometries in the earth and the Icasa, Dodeca, all of them, the moon, they're all multiples of 720. So realize the way everything is connected when we're working with these geometries. And what we talked about when we first started, the harmonics between measure and time and space. Well, we see that the measure here that we're working with is the earth and the moon. And the measure of space is what we're working with, with the sphere of health, the icosododecahedron. So in time, remember back in the beginning when we were talking about the importance of paying attention to sacred texts? Well, creation happened in seven days. That's a sacred number. And when you take seven days and multiply it times the number of hours and the number of minutes in each hour, you get exactly 10,080 minutes. So you see how time is interconnected with geometry and space, is interconnected with the measures we have of things like the moon, the earth. All of this is creating a resonant connection that we can draw upon and use in our lives so that we're able to resonate with these elements as well. That expands us beyond the small aspect of who we are in this reality. See, this is a picture of the dodecahedron working with the icosahedron. And so I'm going to show you this in a physical form right here. So this is the dodecahedron passing through the icosahedron. And what they do is create a phi ratio relationship when they go through each other. So that's working with this caliper, one, this short side to the long side. I'm gonna to try to go through these a little more quickly now so that we can get through everything and 
here, this is the phi ratio relationship. And that is the geometry of both of the Icasa and Dodeca together. This is where we take all the points off. That's when you get the smooth rounded form of the sphere of health. And so what this is really showing us is that the relationship of the moon and the earth itself is creating a relationship to the way we're created. It works with phi and that is something that we find, as I said before, in all the plants, all the animals, all the insects, DNA, the atoms themselves, everything starts following phi ratio relationships. And it's in resonance with the moon and the earth. So the star tetrahedron, the photon, it not only goes fractalizing out through all the platonic solids, but it also goes on an inward journey. And that's what I'm going to share with you right now. You see, again, light is the source of all of creation. It moves into, well, this is going back just to remind you it has 4,320 degrees in it. And when we take that geometry and we start turning it inside out, it's like everything in this universe works with this principle called toroidal flow. So what you just saw on the left is where a torus is moving into itself and it flows in the X, Y, Z axis. In the other class, I'll talk more about the importance of toroidal flow, but just understand it's the way all energy is moving. And on the right, you see a geometric torus. So you can see how geometries can start forming triangles going up and then down and then going into itself and out of itself. And that's just to get you into a sense of when you have three dimensional geometries, they are actually able to move in a toroidal fashion on a fifth dimensional level. And that's what happens that I'm going to try to demonstrate now with this star tetrahedron with an octahedron at the center. When I split that open and fold it back on itself, a whole other geometry is created that is called the cube octahedron. And this geometry is what Bucky referred to as the seed of everything in the universe, because it moves out in a way where it goes on forever forming a grid of octahedrons and tetrahedrons interpenetrating each other going in and out, in and out of each other forever. And this form, when we take the four hexagons that you see here in, in green, red, purple, and blue, when we put bands around them, so they're totally circles, what happens is, we turn those hexagons into circles, and this creates a form that we call the divine integrator. So here we are. This was underneath our other form as it was spinning. And the divine integrator, because it is working with the essence of creation, that field that goes on 
forever that when we draw this into our lives in meditation or spin it or put it under a form that interacts with it, what happens with our field, what happens with our body is we get back into the primal elements of our creation. And we're able to work with our intent and this form and this geometry to be able to shift the energy inside our body and what's going on. That's one of the amazing things of working with three-dimensional sacred geometry. They are antennas, so you feel the energy. Most people, I'm going to say, because not everybody is sensitive to feeling, it depends on how attuned your sensations are, energy is coming off of this. And so whether you feel it or not, it's affecting your environment, it's affecting you, your, your whole system is taking this energy in. So the more that you are in a place where you feel at peace, where you feel connected, where you feel whole, the more you are able to really be fully you, fully human. And that's why really essentially when you go out to a beautiful place in nature and you're hearing that stream and you're feeling the flow of the air and you're seeing all of the beautiful sacred geometry in the area, whether you realize it or not, your body relax, you open up, your spirit is more connected. And so that's what many of these geometries are doing for us in whatever environment that we're in. So it, it really makes a huge difference. What I want to share with you now is a form that we call the woven spiral star. And what's interesting is we've worked with a lot of the components of sacred geometry to create something that is very strongly energetic. And so I'm going to explain some of those components so you understand how we can use sacred geometry to create uh, an energetic tool. In this case, the woven spiral star, it's made up of a six-pointed star. Now, six is a balance point. Six is also the holder for all space and time in this dimension. Um, it's something I can explain more thoroughly at another time. But when you're working with a six-pointed star, you're working with balance. You're working with as above, so below. And a six-pointed star surrounded by a circle is found in Hindi literature where they use that symbol for the heart chakra because it's balancing the upper three chakras with the lower three chakras at the heart center. And in this case, what we've done is at this point on the left, it's actually woven. That means it's not in a flat plane, but it's, it goes over the top and then under, and it does this all the way around. And by weaving, what starts to happen is you start spinning the energy. So the energy starts spinning in a clockwise vortex. Now, this is working again with toroidal flow when you like a tornado, like a water spout. This is what's going on when you're working with spinning energy. You can spin energy into this dimension through using a clockwise vortex. Again, there's another clockwise vortex that I've built in the center by working with a rectangle that's in the phi ratio. And when you break that into a smaller phi ratio rectangle, and you see we have a square, a square, a square, and this takes us into a spiral that you see in things like we saw earlier on the head of a sunflower or in the shell of uh, a anemone you can 
find these kinds of spirals. And so I built that into this geometry to bring in that energy. Now, I also have a sterling silver star in the center that is also woven. Working with gold and working with silver, there are two different metals that are very high in energy. The core of this is made out of silicon bronze, which is 96% copper. Gold, silver, and copper are one above the other in the periodic table of elements. They are very, very special metals. And some of you may realize that in very ancient history, sometimes perhaps tens of thousands of years ago, there were extraterrestrials that visited our planet to mine gold. And they weren't mining gold so they could make jewelry or print coins with somebody's face on it. They were mining gold because they realized its value, its value for working with interdimensional energy, its value for raising the frequencies of a field to work at higher dimensional levels, both for time travel and space travel. So working with that element of gold on this is very important. We also have magnets that are made from a very special rare earth element, samarium cobalt on all the points. We work with right angled um, clockwise spirals. And we also have a woven sacred cubit around the outside, bringing that to royal function into this whole piece and small hexagonal pyramid shaped magnets on the outside. So all of this, all of this brings us into this form that is so wonderful for moving energy. And a lot of people experience it that when you move it in circles on the body or you move it over the body, you can balance the chakras, create um, release of pain and energy, bring energy into it. We've played intense sounds through this, like a drum where someone's back was out and we were able to um, put their back into order again by simply putting that energy through it. And you can speak through it. And when you speak your intent through it, it takes it to a higher dimensional level. I mean, sometimes you can almost feel it and hear it just like this now. And when you take it away, things become a little flatter, a little more two dimensional from what that's really offering us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to move along very quickly now. I've got more slides than I could have thought. And so what we're wanting to share with you next is the fact that we are like an iceberg. And what that means is that the majority of us that is existing is unseen. And only 10%, like an iceberg, that little bit above the water is what we see and we relate to. So that's the way we're constructed. But it's maybe easier to understand if we flip it over and see that the largest part of us is really what came first. That bigger part of you created this little part that you're seeing here and relating to in this third dimension. And that if you look at the way energy flows, it moves from those higher dimensional realms from soul. It moves through all these different dimensions, through the mental body, through the astral body, into the physical body. And another metaphor that might help us understand how this all works is thinking of 
the soul like the boat the surface of the ocean and we as the human being are connected to that through our lifeline our physical body is down here walking along the bottom of the ocean through the thickness of our reality and that all difficulties all diseases it's the blockage or denial of that flow of energy that's moving from source into our body. And so what I mean by that is if you take that metaphor and how the energy wants to come into our body, you can understand that in our reality around us, we have electromagnetic pollution that computers, the cell phones that are constantly around us and on us, and the electricity in the walls and the lighting, that's blocking that flow of energy. The stress we go through, that puts a real kink in that flow of energy. And science has even shown that when stress in our lives builds, disease is triggered and we get sick more easily. And so stress and negative emotions as well. So we know that anger now, science says, will often develop into cancers and diseases and difficulties. So the things in the physical around negative emotions and stress and the electromagnetic pollution are judgments and are what separate us from each other and everything, all of this is putting a kink into the lifeline with soul and the toxins that have been proliferating forever around us. So all of these elements, we can go past them. We can literally rise above them. This is a quotation from a man, Rudolf Steiner, that he made in 1917 when he was basically saying, when the air was not swarming with electrical influences. And realize, he said this in 1917, this was only 25 years after Nikolai Tesla lit up the World's Fair in Chicago for the first time. So that's how few electrical currents were actually going. And yet he recognized how it was having a negative effect on people being able to connect to their humanity. He said it was easier a century ago. Well, it's been over a century since he said this. And that's why all the toxins, all the negative influences that have come into this reality since that time are affecting our well being and our consciousness. And that's why we've created this form that is spinning behind us that you see here as the 5G solution. I told you the importance of gold plating to rise into the higher levels. This actually operates on a battery so that it's moving and it's spinning with a sterling silver triangle that's uh, there around the outside that's stationary. And in the center, there is a Tesla induction coil that's built on a steel core, because many of you may realize the importance of working with steel in the flow of electrons. And so what we've done is we have a phi ratio tetrahedron at the top, it's got a star, six pointed star base, you know the importance of that now. We've wrapped that core with titanium. We've wrapped it with copper coil. We also have a sacred cubit out of a triple woven piece that's going around the outside that's 18 inches long. All of these different components, we have an advanced eye connect in the base and a coil that sometimes we change directions as far as bringing the energy in or taking it out. The bottom one has a Herkimer diamond in it. And all of these coils are wrapped 
a certain number of times ends up being nine. Nine, as you know, is a completion number. When you wrap coils with nine, you're creating the strongest resonance with energy that you can create. The bottom cup has a hole in it to allow the energy to flow through in a toroidal fashion. So this piece is what we are working with to energize, take people to a higher dimensional level. And actually, I think it's important uh, for us to share right now that when we're working with these kinds of geometries, it's not like blocking the electromagnetic fields. That would be impossible because they're all around us. And trying to block things is medieval thinking where you're building a big um, wall around yourself and keeping out the bad guys. Didn't work for them. Someone always found a way to break through. Someone broke through the Great Wall of China. All it took was a bribe. And so what we are working with, with this tool is creating a resonance that takes you to a higher dimensional level. So you're no longer bothered by the electromagnetic fields. You're no longer disconnected by that reality. What I'm showing you here is how we've taken a lot of the three-dimensional geometries that you've seen, and we found a way to bring them in to a 2D dimension and bring them in to our pendants and our pocket pieces called advanced eye connects. So what I'm showing you are each one of these where you have three arrows is a single geometry, a single form, that exists in 2D. These are what we've put them into, the geometries. And as you can see, with all the lettering on the bottom, we have 35 antenna systems inside all of our pendants. So what's important about these pieces we got to a place where we had been working with these three-dimensional sacred geometries for quite a few years, and we knew the power that they had. And we wanted to create something that could be on our bodies all the time. And so that was really our mission. And so we have the advanced eye connect that Gregory was showing, and then the pendants that are two-sided pendants that rest at the heart chakra. They're imbuing us with these energies for these higher connections, for the connection so that we can maintain our relationship to who we really are, to the universe, to spirit, to soul. And these have just been amazing. We get um, stories from people telling us about how their intuition has become so much stronger, how the relationships have become better, how serendipitous experiences get to be a regular way of life, which is actually the way things are supposed to be. So these are just beautiful examples of what we have that enable us to take these universal principles and bring them into our life in every moment that we have. Ah, and what we do after we've created those geometries or created those pendants is we put them in chambers on our land that are aligned with over 13 vortexes on the uh, couple hundred acres that we have here. We have um, tubes with uh, electromagnetic frequencies spinning through them. Geometries are spinning through the centers of these tubes. And we have uh, another chamber going at the same time, as well as forms that are 15, 20 feet high. All of these are going, bringing through energies to energize the pendants and connect them to the grid of the planet. So by 
working with those, um, what we're able to do is create a pendant that here you see before um, a person was touching uh, one of our pendants or pieces that they had many internal organs that were underactive in the red zone by just hanging on to one of the forms for just five minutes everything goes into the balanced green zone and here's another image where you're seeing before where there are many breaks in the energy field surrounding the body and after five minutes of touching one of the pieces you have a solid energy field where actually in areas where there had been weakness before it's now even stronger with more energy coming in to build up the field so all of this has been tested by scientists we've done many different double blind tests where we found that these pendants make a real difference in people's lives both health wise and mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, your ability to intuit things and create what it is you're here to create. So this is what we're working with. And we absolutely guarantee everything that we do. <laughs> and we wanted to have a special offer for you so that you could take a look at what we have. As we told you earlier, we've been working together on this technology and of course evolving technologies for over 36 years. And we have been doing this because we have just seen how it's made such a difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of so many people. And a lot of what we've shared with you today, that learning came from first the doing, the making of the forms, following the guidance. And then we found out why we did it. And that's what we're sharing with you today. And so did you tell them the special offer? Oh, the special offer is during yes. this time, you there's a coupon code that you may use and it'll be up on the page and you can receive 15% off of the regular price. So the mm -hmm. products that you'll see on that page are the ones that we've been talking about during the presentation. So check it out and see what calls to you. And now we'll answer a few questions. Oh, thank you. Turn that double off. Oops, so we've been getting just a moment. Is that off? No. Nope. Turn off. Nope. We've got an echo, 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 Oops. echo. Oops, sorry. We have no echo. Well, we do a little. Can't you turn it off? It won't let me. Ah, so thank you for spending time with us today and there have been a few questions that have been coming in and we've got different monitors that are feeding us feedback right now so one of the questions was what's going on with the metric system does that work similar to what i've been sharing with you around miles and inches and feet. And actually it doesn't. Um, the metric system was an attempt at creating a unified base 10 system by the French in the 1700s, 1800s. And they measured the distance from the equator to the North Pole and broke that down into basic in increments that were supposed to be um, a meter. And I have seen 
that measure used actually within the pyramid uh, at Giza, within the sarcophagus, there is um, a measure that demonstrates they were also working with that understanding of breaking the earth um, radius on the outside. Uh, well, not just the radius, but the distance from the equator to the North Pole into that meter length. But for the most part, as far as the divine measures you find with the earth, with the moon, with the sun that I've been sharing with you now, those universal measures, this is why the mile came about. Because the units that the earth and the moon have been broken into divide evenly into the platonic solids and the degrees and the number of degrees in a circle as being 360. So these are divine units that existed long before supposedly the mile was discovered by the um, Romans a couple thousand years ago. So we've had these measures going for hundreds of thousands of years and only recently we've been applying you know the mile that moniker to them but the uh get that out of there but at any rate so the divine measures that you find in um in the mile in the foot in the inch this is why um, there are many sacred geometers that want to keep that aspect of our measuring system alive and well because um, it relates to the way creation has been formed around us. Thank you. Thank you. And there's another question that I want to get to. And um, this is from someone who's asking, how can we use it? work with it for solving emotional issues, um, unfulfilled wishes, deep desires. So all of this is about connection. These geometries are working to connect you on those higher levels. Your intuition becomes more um, attuned, um, your sense of purpose, your inner knowing, all of these things are working in a more synchronistic way because there is an alignment that these geometries are um, helping you with. It's kind of like when you go out into like a cathedral, you know, there's sacred geometric cathedrals all through the world that are built on these principles. When you go inside, there's a sense of silence, peace. You get in touch with you and your higher beingness. So that's what's really important that's happening with that. So you have that, that connection. Now, the mm -hmm. pendants and the eye connects that we showed, they are creating that resonance. So things just happen. You know, we've had people who um, their lives just start changing, their relationships get better. Um, people seem to relate to them different because their energy is different. So those are some of the things that can happen in a way of just allowing. And I think actually we're moving more into a time where allowing is such an important aspect as opposed to trying to make things happen. I think that's something that we're moving, that we're moving out of. Um, with these geometries um, and actually with the pendants and eye connects, we've mm -hmm. created these attunements. There are like little um, short meditations where um, I'm guiding you through using these uh, these pendants and these and the eye connects um, for particular aspects of your life, and they are really helpful for people. So if you purchase the pendant or eye connect, you'll get those, and then you can use those. And people have reported back to us that they've been awesome. Um, then with the sacred geometries. Those are like physical objects. When Gregory was showing 
the woven spiral star. Um, that's one that by waving it around, it actually is affecting your, your biology, your, phys your physical being, your energy field. Mm -hmm. um, the 5G solution is another one. Um, we had an interesting experience back in um, 2013. We had a huge flood that wiped out all of our infrastructure. So for several weeks, we had no electricity, um, none of the things, no cell phones worked, any of that. So we were in this zone that was really so peaceful. It was amazing. When Gregory turned on that 5G solution for the first time in our home, I went, oh, that's the feeling that I had when we weren't being impinged on by that all the electronics, all of the wiring in the walls and the, you know, the cell phones and the Wi-Fi's and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it sets up a resonance. All of these 3D geometries set up a resonance that is affecting your field. And again, you know, this is about conscious evolution. So everything is about bringing it to consciousness. And these tools are helping you with that process. Remember when I showed you um, the boat on the surface, the human being at the base and that lifeline, the energy flowing in between the boat and the human being in the diving suit and all those things, the electromagnetic pollution, the toxins, the um, negative emotions, the stress, all those things are strangling us, making it difficult for us to connect to clear thinking, to clear understanding. When you are working with some of these tools, what happens is your vibrational frequency starts to shift. And prior to that, human beings feel like victims. They feel like they are the result of what's going on politically, the result of not having enough money or not having enough of this or that. We feel pushed around by this reality. And it's difficult to understand how to work with our emotions, how to work with our minds, how to work with our bodies until we can move to a vibrational level that is allowing us to look at things from a higher perspective, feel things from a higher perspective. And then we can watch what's going on in our life watch this character dance and not take him so personally. We get personally involved in this stuff and we can't make clear decisions. We don't know how to heal without that perspective and the energy we can draw upon with that perspective to then shift this reality in our lives. Thank you. Okay, let's go to um, another question. Um, we're being asked to talk about the difference between the iConnect and the advanced iConnect and which one to purchase. And we'll also just share a little bit about the difference between the iConnect and the Heart Companion Pendant. Um, so with the iConnect and the advanced iConnect, we started out with the iConnect and over the years since we first launched this product, we've made different internal changes into, um, into the iConnect. Let me just pull mine out here so you can, I can show you what it looks like. Here, here I you can, can do it better. I can maybe take it. And um, so we've done, we've made some different changes. We've even added um, like a emerald or a chrome diopside in it. We also upgraded the internal crystal to a higher frequency. And that happened, mm -hmm. um, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago. Not quite. But and the, we, we really were getting guidance that it was time to take that step. So 
we don't actually sell the iConnex anymore. We sell the advanced iConnex and that has that higher frequency crystal in there and some different antenna systems. Um, now with the Heart Companion and the iConnex, there's a lot of similarities on what's inside one of the differences with the heart companion is that it's designed to rest at the heart center. And we really feel like that's an important upgrade to work with the heart energy to learn how to guide our lives more through the heart. There's two sides, there's a star face, and then there's an earth face. So you get both sides, you can turn it depending on what you want. In most cases for most for many of the people for myself, particularly, I find that I generally wear it with the earth face towards my body to add a sense of more grounding. Um, and the, um, the difference in the geometries on the eye connect and on the heart companion are a little bit different. But there's a lot, a lot of similarity. Now, one thing in all honesty about the iConnect, it's, it's for um, putting it in your pocket. When we first started to sell it, uh, before we had the pendants, we used to, um, if we didn't have women didn't have pockets, they'd put them in their bra. Um, and I really feel like the heart companion has a lot of value um, that the iConnect adds to. I always have one on me the eye connect in my pocket and the pendant on me. Um, there was one of, one of the problems, honestly, with the eye connect is that sometimes it ended up in the washing machine or it fell out of a pocket and got lost. And a pendant is much less likely to have that problem. Okay, so did I, I think I answered that one. Um, and then I'm gonna have Gregory answer this. Uh, this is Jared, who's been using the iConnect and sleeping with it and loves it and wants some forms and um, three-dimensional forms and would like to know what we recommend. And his, his question was, should I start with Metatron's cube? Uh, one thing I can do is actually tune in to each person directly and tell you what might serve you. Um, best at this time. So I can do that later with Jared personally. There's a way to connect with him. But well, Jared right now, um, by the way, if anybody wants to email us at office at iConnect to all.com and that's I connect the number two all a l l dot com, just like our website. Well, for Jared, I am hearing that the divine integrator would be a wonderful tool uh, for you to start working with, to meditate with. Um, everything work, all these geometries we've shared with you work with the 5G where you can place it under it that increases the energetic flow, puts it out into the space. As I shared earlier, this geometry that's spinning the 5G is punching a hole in the field of negativity around us. In all the chaos, it's creating a field of coherence, a field of focus and connection. So it allows for all these geometries to be really expanded in your environment. But to start with, for you working with this piece with four bands, it's the divine integrator. And to, when you have it under here, I find it's best to have the, the cross be up and down or when you are meditating with it. I find that it, it takes me into a very high space and sometimes I like to hang things above my crown chakra and take it in that way as well. 
Um, you know, many of these forms we use for meditation. We have them. We have a meditation um, room, and we have those hanging where we can bring that energy in, and it just it's just amazing how it expands the the meditation. Um, so I want to um, let's see. I want to get to one more, uh, or actually two more. Um, when healing others with this fear of health, what is the best way to heal physical pain? For example, my wife is having intense joint pains in her ankles and wrists. So I'm gonna let you answer that, Gregory. Well, uh, we've even found uh, people have taken the, uh, the pendants and working with just a, um, a cloth or something that you would use for wrapping a sore muscle, held the pendant next to the place with the pain. Uh, often pain is where the energy gets blocked. And so whatever you can do to help move that energy. We've worked with, as I said, the woven spiral star over an area to reduce the pain and to work with the sphere of health. Um, I work with this on a bed called the causal generator where I'm spinning it beneath a massage table where I'm lying down. I also have a Metatron's cube under there and this whole form at the head. So working with whatever form you have to help the energy move by placing it near the spot where you have the pain and working with your intent, working with your focus to see that energy moving, to release what needs to be released. Sometimes this takes um, a while to work through all the emotional issues. I've personally been experiencing a lot of sciatic pain in the last few months, and I've worked with the tools. They've helped a great deal. And I've also worked with physical therapy and recently working with reflexology to work with moving the energy in not only my left side where I'm feeling the pain, but I had to move the energy in the right side where that part of my body was not allowing the energy to flow in through the left because I was afraid of stepping out on the right. So what I'm sharing with you in all of this is the importance of the multidimensional nature of pain. It ends up in our physical bodies, but what we need to realize is it can be a combination of not just what's locked in the physical, but what's been going on emotionally as well, what's been going on mentally and with stress as well. So working on all those levels can help with the release of pain. Yeah. And the pendants, as I've said, some people have literally the eye connect, put it right on yeah. to the ankle or the back or the knee, wherever you're feeling the pain. Yeah, yeah, because this is all about how we interact with all of this um, with consciousness. So there's so many different levels of, of how to make this more and more effective for you. Um, okay, we've been going on for quite a while. We have one last question. And I, I just wanna also remind you to, um, we'll put up the URL for that page with this special offer, it's iconnecttoall.com slash offer. There is a coupon code that is the word divine and that's all lowercase, D-I-V-I-N-E. So uh, make sure you, you get that code. Um, so here's someone who says, I have the kids um, I connect pendant, which when I wear it, I feel like the energy is too much. I feel anxious. 
However, my son is able to wear it without being overwhelmed and is improving in being more grounded. Any tips for me? I would love to wear it too. So I'm going to let you answer that. We have a child connect for a child. We have the regular companion for an adult. The energy shifts after a being is 12 years old. So you're, it, yeah, it doesn't make you feel better because you're not a child anymore. Your energy has shifted. That's why sometimes uh, there are certain medications that can be um, very stimulating for a child, but opposite for an adult. So let the child's heart companion be for the child. It works well for them. And it has many, it has fewer components inside that literally depend upon um, a large adult with a heart companion having that um, piece on them. And then it's almost like the child's um, heart companion feeds off the antenna systems within the adult one and they reinforce each other. It helps with the connection. It helps with the um, empathic and telepathic flow between you and your child. So get the adult one for adults, even that we have, have them starting very simple with just one gem, if you wish. And then the gems make a difference because the gems direct the energy from the fourth dimension, which is the dimension around the body that people that see auras, they see that dimension and they see colors in it. Those colors relate to the emotions and the colors in the gems relate to their ability to bring through the energy from that emotional body into the physical body. So I like to recommend at least something like the chakra that has all seven of the chakra gems and is able to vibrate with those seven chakras. And therefore, when you're in need to be more mental or more in your solar plexus or more grounded at the root, the gem is there to help move that energy through into your body. And then the rainbow has those seven plus an additional seven gems and the highlight is all high vibrational gems. Okay. I know there's got to be more questions, and we've been going on for about an hour and a half. We have another class next Saturday, and then two Saturdays from today, we have um, our master class. And we will be sending out a replay. Um, that link will go out. It'll be available sometime in the next uh, 12 hours and we'll get that out to you. I know some people came in late or left early. So the replay link is available. And of course we have people from all over the world and our time doesn't correlate with your time. So, um, but on a higher level, we're all here together. So um, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope that you'll join us again. If you do have any questions, you're welcome to email us at office at iConnect, the number two, all, A-L-L dot com. And we'll have a slide up right when we end this program that gives you that URL to the special offer page. And um, we've had a good time, right? And I hope you have too. <laughs> oh, so wow. thank you. Easy. Thank you so very much mm -hmm. for taking your time today. We send our blessings and love. And love.